Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're talking about making a sound called synth brass. We'll be using a Nord Stage 3, and this request actually came up from a subscriber of my Patreon page. His name is Greg, and he asked if I could make this sound for a particular song that he had in mind. Chris Robinson Brotherhood is the name of the group, and the name of the song is called Reflections on a Broken Mirror. I had never really heard of the group or the song before, but the moment I laid ears on that particular sound, I knew right away that it was a synth brass type sound. So let's listen into what this sounds like from the original group here, and then we'll play it on the Nord Stage 3. But definitely stay tuned because this sound can be used on some other popular songs that you have definitely heard before, such as Toto's Africa, as well as Drive from the Cars. So stay tuned. We're going to go through some samples here, and then I'll show you how to make this sound on your own Nord Stage 3. But if you follow along and you have a Nord Wave 2 or some other synthesis keyboard, you should be able to get the gist of it and be able to come close on whatever synth you're using to get this sound from your keyboard. And we're going to start now with the demos. So first, the sound we're trying to emulate. And now on the Nord Stage 3. So this synth brass sound makes a great foundation for the song called Africa by Toto. How about this one from the cars? So this is one of my favorite sounds to produce on a synthesizer because once you start with this sound, it really is the beginning for a lot of other different sounds. You can open up the filter and change it around. You can adjust the envelopes. You can add an arpeggiator. You can put it into monophonic mode and have a whole different synth, but it has that same awesome property, which is the idea of filtering through a modulation envelope, which we're going to learn here in great detail, and it'll all make sense. It sounds fancy now, but it'll all make sense when you see it played out here in a second, hopefully. So this is the original sound that we have here. And by the way, feel free to follow along, whether you have a Nord Stage 3 or Nord Wave 2 or Nord Lead A1. A lot of these principles will translate. In fact, you don't even need a Nord keyboard. You could use a monophonic synth. You could use a virtual synth on your computer because what I'm about to show you here really does translate. So here's the original sound that I came up with. Now, this is nothing new. I did, I did make the sound with my own two hands and my own two ears. Um, but as far as the sound goes, this is a common synth sound, and you heard it already played in popular music. So let's just show you how to build this. So this is my sound. We'll keep going back here and referring to it. But I've got another program here on my Nord keyboard. I've named it One, and this gives us a starting point so we can have sort of a, a blank slate to build our canvas here. All right, so I'm going to initialize this, and what I'm left with here... Uh, so long as I take off the effects and such, is just a simple saw wave. So you want to adjust your synthesizer to get to a saw wave. A single oscillator playing a saw wave. This is nothing new. This is how a lot of sounds start. In fact, most of the sounds seem to use a saw wave more than any other type of waveform. At least that's been my experience so far. So the key to making this sound sound great is the idea behind the filtering. And not just filter 
for the filter's sake. In other words, here's my buzzy. If I take the filter down and cut off those frequencies so that you're hearing more lows and no highs, uh, that's one aspect of it. But the idea behind this sound is to move that filter to open it up as I push the note and then have it fade back down a little bit. That's what gives this sound its magic qualities. And to do that on any synth, you want to use a modulation envelope. It's modulating the envelope, the filter aspect of it. So we have one here on the Nord Stage 3, which we're going to do, and I'll show you right away how that makes a difference. So as I bring the filter down and I adjust these, uh, I'm going to put everything down to zero here on my attack, decay, and release for the modulation envelope. And then I'm going to bring the filter down to almost to the point where you can't hear it because the frequencies are cut off so much. Then I'm going to introduce the modulation envelope. This gives the synthesizer uh, the command to use this modulation envelope as the dictator for exactly where that filter is going to be opened and closed and over what time period and over what control, whether I push the key or not. So let me sh let me just put that to about halfway. I've got it on to a 7.0. And when I push the note now, I hear just like this ticking. And that's because the envelope, it is going through the envelope, but the envelope isn't opened up yet. So let's open up the attack. And let's add some decay, which is when I hold the note, it will sustain that a little bit. There we go. So that basically opens the filter. As I push the note, it's opening the filter right away and then coming down like this. And just by doing those few settings, you can already hear we're having that kind of personality trait going on here with that sound. Now I'm going to bring the filter down even lower which tells the synthesizer to start even lower, almost start with nothing on the filter. Now you'll notice it cuts off very abruptly as I let go. That's because I don't have any release set yet, so I need to release the volume of that so that it holds out. But at the same time, I need to release the filter because if I don't release the filter, the note will just come down to nothing. Let's show you what I mean. So the filter's closed, but I still hear that very basic uh, frequency that I've set for it. So if I want that frequency to hold its, um, its openness, if that's a word there. There we go. That's better. Now I feel it's a little too, too much release here, so let's release that less. We're getting closer. Now to warm up the sound, I'm going to push something called unison here, and I'm going to put it to a unison too. If you don't have a unison button, and this unison is not to be confused with playing more than one note at the same time, this unison has to do with introducing a second oscillator slightly detuned at the same time. So that widens the sound and gives it a little bit more warmth, quite a bit more warmth actually. And I'm going to lower the filter even more, and then I'm going to take a little less modulation envelope uh, influence out of the mix. Took too much out. There we go. So you want to dial those in to, to your own personal taste. And then I believe we're using a different filter here. We're using a Moog-type filter, the LPM, which will influence it a little differently than some of these others. Okay. All right, let's save what we have so far and then go back to our original. So obviously we have more filter happening there, so let's figure out how to get that going. Okay. I guess I needed more envelope, a more modulation envelope. Still cutting out too fast. So this is all about dialing and tweaking and dialing and tweaking and dialing and tweaking until you get to what you want. Uh, but once you understand how these different things work together, you can start to understand how to build these yourself. 
All right, so those are the basics there. Let's add some effects. Uh, I believe I have some reverb going on here. I probably have like a stage one reverb, maybe for the bright setting. And I'll get these exact settings here in just a minute. And then I'm adding some chorus, a chorus two with um, a rates and amounts. That gives it even more detune and a fuller sound. So it has that effect. All right, let's save what we have and go back. Now, another key ingredient to this is I'm using this configuration here, which introduces a slight pitch bend at the beginning of the note. And uh, so you'll want to adjust your Nord keyboard to the semi option, one pitch, it's called. All right. And then from there, uh, you, you don't want to influence that. You don't want to add pitch to it because that'll, that'll change the pitch of the original oscillator. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to have just a little bit of this uh, here, this modulation envelope to 2.5. This says, use this small amount and, and, and bend the note just at the beginning of it. So 2.5 is what I settled on. Here's without it. Pretty stale. You can hear just a touch of detune there as the note plays. And if you can't hear that on your end, uh, it, it's only because you're probably not in front of a synthesizer with headphones, but if you can't hear it, um, it, it could just be that you haven't developed that particular listening skill, but you will eventually hear these things the more you work with this and you listen very closely, you'll hear these subtleties coming into the sound. But that makes a big difference for this sound. Well, it's a small subtlety, but it adds to that unexplainable subconscious, why do I like this sound aspect of things. All right, so that's the synth brass. So um, let me give you the exact settings here, and uh, that way you can imitate this to a T on your stage three. So we have this going on. We have the modulation amount of 75 milliseconds here on the attack. The mod decay is a 4.1 and the mod release is a 1.05 seconds. Uh, we have the classic wave with the semi pitch and then the modulation, the oscillator control is down to zero. Um, this is a 2.5. This is the LFO slash modulation amount. In this case, it's the modulation amount. Um, the LFO, I'm pretty sure is it down to zero. Yes, the modulation envelope over here affecting this is the 5.8. The frequency, which is really key, and we're gonna talk about uh, how this makes such a difference later on here in just a minute. That's 46 hertz for this frequency cutoff. The resonance is a zero. The LPM filter is on. The KB track is at a two-thirds. I've got the unison two. I might have mentioned that already. The attack is a 0.5, so that's all the way down to zero. The amp decay is 27 seconds, and the release is 132 milliseconds here. All right, so we've got that. Then the chorus, the rate on the chorus is a 3.7, and the amount on the chorus is a 2.6. The reverb is at 3.2, with the stage 2, actually, with the bright setting. And the EQ, very important for this sound, is the treble is at a 6.8, the mid is at a 6.5, um, the frequency that we're affecting there is 425 hertz, the drive is zero. The bass is a positive 8.2. That's what gives it that real beefy bass at the bottom there. That bottom end is just incredible. All right. I think that takes care of all the settings for this one sound. So now let's see what we can do with it once we start with the sound, how we can tweak it. So first, let's put it into monophonic mode and... And makes for a great lead sound. And you can add some glide. Then you can adjust the uh, filter cutoff. Now, if you add the arpeggiator to that. Have 
it going in a down pattern. Now, listen to that arpeggiator. I'm going to put the KB hold on there. And I'm going to add LFO with a very slow rate. That's going to open and close that filter on the LFO ever so slowly, giving you that movement over time. Let me take it out of monophonic mode. Here comes the LFO. And that's your synth brass sound lesson for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Feel free to subscribe and like this. Share it with those who care. And thanks for watching. Hear the drums echo.